Now, here's a quick quiz for you. Okay? What is in the Kenyan constitution that is not in any other constitution in the world? What unique thing is this that is only in the Kenyan constitution? Can't be found anywhere else. And I believe I need to emphasize, I am not off topic. Okay? This is extremely topical and relevant to us right now. In Kenya, I am giving you many, many hints in answering this question. You know in the current Gen Z revolution, there has been a problem. Okay? Actually, clever, manipulated propaganda and narrative to stop the Gen Z revolution. Very clever. And that is, people have been asking the question, what will happen after Ruto goes? And many seem to believe Kenya will become a failed state. Kenya will sink into anarchy. Because you cannot even go into a general election. There is no IEBC. And by the way, I believe after Ruto goes, people need to take responsibility. People need to be charged and take blame for this situation we find ourselves in today with no IEBC. Because when you don't have an IEBC, what you're actually saying to the people, you're not allowed to elect your leaders. This is officially a dictatorship. Because I've closed all roads, all avenues, to allow you to elect your chosen leaders. Somebody, some people, need to be charged for violating our constitution with impunity. And when Ruto goes, Gashagwa cannot be sworn in. Why? Because of the nature in which Ruto went. Assuming that he goes not by being incapacitated and not by being impeached, Gashagwa cannot be sworn in. The deputy president cannot take over. Let's be clear. And in any case, if Ruto is removed by the sovereign, what are the people saying when they say Ruto must go? Obviously, what they're saying is that the entire Ruto regime must go. That is Ruto, Mtuwake Omkono, and every single person he has appointed must go. That is what they mean. Now, some of the Kenyans who have that information, who have understood that, have applied emergency breaks. Yeah, this is true. Yes, Ruto will go. And then what? Will be in a bigger problem. I even saw a post that said, bluntly, a bad government is better than no government. Much better. Huh? Anyway, now you understand how relevant my question is. And you also have a huge, fat, big hint that will help you get the correct answer. Okay? But let me give it to you. What is different in the Kenyan constitution that cannot be found in any other constitution on the face of the earth is that our constitution is the only one that envisages a people's revolution. Yani Chris, what you're saying is that there's no other constitution in the whole world that foresees, that envisages a revolution by the people. Yes, that is correct. Cutting out the Kizungumingi, what that document says is that power in the country called Kenya is with the people, belongs to the people. And the people have options on how to exercise that power. 
they can do it through electing leaders. But they can also do it directly. What does that mean? Directly. Well, we can get an important clue on what that means. In something else the same constitution says, it is enshrined very deeply embedded in this document that picketing protests are allowed and that has given some people some very serious problems let me explain the Ruto regime has consulted every legal expert has tried every legal acrobatics available anywhere to stop the man the man the inspector general of police even went ahead and banned man the man in the cbd somebody went to court and you know what happened the matter is still in court but meanwhile that ban was lifted because you see you can't you can't stop man the man any government trying to do that will quickly realize that they are trapped by the constitution. And while you are picketing and protesting, you are also exercising another constitutional right. Yeah. Very heavily protected. Your right to your opinion. Now you will understand why the government has had a very difficult time taking the protesters they have arrested to court. What do you charge them with? Some genius, Aliweka, drunk and disorderly. <laughs> okay, where's the exhibit? Where did this happen? Show me a video. Eh, like that one. They're carrying a bottle of water. They're carrying placards. Drunk and disorderly? Seriously? A fun day you want to waste the court's time? And now, you will also understand why some protesters are getting abducted. We all saw the former Nandi Hills legislator, Alfred Gater, being abducted on a Sunday and poof, he vanished. But then he was very lucky because State House decided to have a live interview between the press and President Ruto. And I guess when this decision was being made and he was being prepped for this very tough upcoming interview, somebody pointed out, they will ask you about Keter. What are you going to say? Uh, what? And then things moved very fast. Something happened to Keter that had never happened to any other person who had previously been abducted for expressing their views and opinions according to our constitution. He was booked and processed at the Kamkunji police station. That was not supposed to happen. And some people had to do some very quick, very fast thinking yeah, to come up with something to charge him with, which they did, incitement, etc., etc., but hold on a minute. Where do you draw the line between expressing your views and opinions and inciting others? Huh? Where do you draw that line? Anyway, I'm sure you get my drift. No other constitution on the face of the planet envisages a revolution by the people directly. The sovereign exercising their rights directly there is no other constitution in the world to understand this even better please allow me to tell you a brief story some of us were fortunate enough to be around when the constitution was being put together and we were journalists and we were analyzing the putting together of that constitution even if we didn't write everything that we saw and observed. But it was very clear to quite a number of us 
that there was somebody behind the construction of this constitution who was putting it together with Daniel Toretich Arab Moy's photo right next to his notes. <laughs> so, reduce the powers of the presidency. If possible, abolish the presidency. But when the team led by that patriotic, legendary Kenyan, Yash Palgai, went to the ground and talked to the people, most Kenyans were confused. How do you do without a president? How? We must have a president. And so these very clever Kenyans found a way around that one by creating a ceremonial president who would not be allowed to belong to any political party. And they would have limited powers, but they would be a symbol of national unity. Something like the King of England, that kind of thing. Something else. You see, Moy was doing exactly what Ruto is doing right now. Ensuring that he had parliament in his pocket to vote how the executive wanted. And I believe that is how the recall tool was birthed. Yeah, a process by which you can recall your member of parliament before he finishes his or her term. Well, you know how that story ended. Politicians got involved. The intelligence community got involved. And you can be sure the intelligence community got constitutional experts to walk them through so as to deal with all the aspects of the then proposed constitution that would frustrate their work, that would frustrate the cartels, that would change Kenya. And everything was watered down. But fortunately for you and I, they missed a few things. And one of the biggest things they missed, they did not deal with, are the small, small details that envisage a revolution by the people of Kenya. And especially that which is right at the beginning of our constitution. The power of the people. They are the sovereign. They can exercise it. Either indirectly through elected leaders. Or directly. And so. The day after Ruto leaves. Or immediately after Ruto leaves. The truth is, there should be no constitutional crisis. From where? The sovereign, who will have removed Ruto, will not stop there. And the constitution allows them. Oh yes. And they can use a constituent assembly. For example, get representatives from every single county. And together, they can craft a document and form an interim government. Where? Wacha kusema apana. Soma constitution ya Kenya. Kwendo usome. Welewe. It is written in simple everyday language. Deliberately, by the way. And this interim government, with limited powers, can prepare the country for a general election. Reconstitute the IABC and do everything else that needs to be done to prepare the country called Kenya for a fresh general election. Now, for the sake of those who are thinking right now, his stories are kumekwicha, ni stories are jaba. For the sake of those guys, let me take you back into history, in fact very recently in history, to the year 2017. You remember that disputed election? You remember that election that was nullified by David Maraga's Supreme Court? And remember, NASA started a process to remove the government of Uhuru Kenyatta using county assemblies. Remember that? And then remember what they did after that? Going to each and every county in the country 
and creating constituent assemblies. Remember all that? You can do your own research. But let me zoom in on something very important. This whole process was ongoing and was only stopped by something that happened in Kenya. And that thing happened on the stairs of Arambe House, the handshake between Raila Odinga and Uhuru Kenyatta. And shortly after that, Raila Odinga communicated with the person who was in charge of this, a man called David Ndee, and the process stopped. That is only when the process stopped. Remember that? Bottom line, those who are saying Ruto must go, should not apply any bricks and they should stop listening to pure fiction and instead focus on the only constitution in the world that envisages a revolution by the people. Clearly, details can be very important in a document, especially a legal document. In fact, details are everything in a legal document that is why we are all advised to read carefully before we sign although in this case we are very glad people did not do that <laughs> we are so happy that people made that mistake and they quickly signed without reading the small print and now because of that Kenya can be saved. And some of us who are spiritual can see the hand very clearly, the hand of the ancient of days. Now we have about five days left in the season to gift yours truly. You can see details on your screens right now, repeated in the description area below and also in the comments which you can use right away to participate in this season that is a tradition of the Kumekucha family and for which I will forever be so grateful. Asanteni sana. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha. <laughs>